Hi everyone, it's Dr. Carolyn here. Wow, it's been a hectic week. I hope you're not getting too overwhelmed, but if you are, you're not alone. And for many of you, you may have unconsciously put overeating or binging as your number one strategy for coping with stress, uncertainty, fear, anxiety, and heaven knows there's plenty of that going around right now. So today we're gonna to be talking about what do I do because I'm binging more during the pandemic than ever before. So not surprising actually, because one of the hallmarks of food addiction, binge eating disorder and emotional eating is that we use food as a way to push down uncomfortable feelings. Uh, it's also used as a way to numb ourselves from feelings that we don't want to feel. It's a way to kind of turn a blind eye um, against, you know, everything that's happening these days uh, worldwide, really. So it's not surprising that you're eating like for me. <laughs> I'll just speak for myself. It's not surprising that I ate almost an entire box of cookies yesterday. Uh, just taking a few at a time, though. But the bottom line is this is not unusual. It doesn't mean you have failed and it doesn't mean that you need to drop everything, go on a diet or take any other drastic measures. So again, the first thing is to recognize how you're using food. First of all, is it for comfort? Is it for stress relief? Is it for an escape? Is it to deal with feeling overwhelmed? So there's a lot going on and overwhelm is the word of the day, really. Now, if you are black, indigenous or other person of color, you may also be being activated or your own trauma may be being reactivated by a lot of the news that's happening now. So it's important to recognize that many of us in the BIPOC community have had historical trauma. Many of us may be um, suffering from the effects of trauma that's been passed down from one generation to another to another. And if you're in any other marginalized community, you too may have experienced oppression, um, you know, microaggressions or uh, that kind of abuse based on your, the, the color of your skin, your national origin, your religion, your ability level, et cetera. So all of this is coming up now for, for everyone. And if you have had childhood trauma on top of that, you should not be surprised that you're feeling maybe unsafe or you may be feeling a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, and then you turn to food to deal with those feelings. So it's it's just really important to be aware that this is a, a time both for us personally, as well as for um, our nation and also the world to address some difficult, uh, long simmering problems in our society. So you may need to pay special attention to how you're feeling and not let those feelings get pushed down or numbed by food. In the anchor program, I work with people from actually from all over the world. And most of the individuals I see with binge eating, food addiction, or emotional or stress eating do have a history of either individual or intergenerational or historical trauma. And many of them have not made the connection, which I hope you have by now, of that link between uh, childhood adversity and the risk for eating um, and food, um, food addiction, eating behaviors such as overeating, benching, etc. So there is a link. If you haven't looked at that, then sign up for one of my free consults. I'll be happy to talk with you further about that. I also have talked about that in my TEDx Pleasant Grove talk uh, because if you haven't noticed that, then you, you may be unconsciously, you, you may not be aware 
that some of what you're feeling comes from things that happened long ago or even things that happened in other generations that didn't happen to you. And we've, you know, the science has been able to show now that the effects of trauma can be passed from one generation to children and grandchildren. Uh, so if you've had grandparents, great grandparents who experienced the Holocaust, uh, are descendants of slaves, uh, were are indigenous people who all over the world who have been sent to, you know, grandparents have been sent to uh, reservation schools and so on and so forth. Or maybe you're the adult child of an alcoholic and maybe uh, that uh, the alcohol use disorder started in your grandparents and then uh, in one of your parents. And then the effects of how those people dealt with their trauma could be passed on to you. And we see that a lot with the adult child of alcoholics and you can go online and look at the laundry list of characteristics that are associated with being a descendant of someone with alcohol use disorder. So now is the time for you to become aware of these triggers, what's being activated inside of you, what those feelings really mean, instead of maybe blaming those feelings on something that's happening right now. And there may be things that are happening right now as well, so I'm not discounting that. So I'd, I'd like to, you know, just say that um, at this point in time, it's really important for us to prioritize our mental health. And in this video, I'm just going to talk about a few things you can do that aren't that difficult to help prioritize your mental health. So think of a time when your mind did maybe did not feel good, and maybe it's right now. <laughs> You may have had a lot of um, racing thoughts or a lot of anxiety or excessive worrying, you know, constant worrying about some particular topic in the news or something you've been told or something that happened to you. Uh, and you may have felt there was nothing you could do to change any of that. But I, I really want to give you hope that you can prioritize your mental health and improve your mental health no matter how overwhelming the circumstances are. So one of the first things you can do is try to quiet your mind. I know that seems like a really tough thing right now because we have you know, all the pandemic worries and then we have the social injustice worries and then we have the financial worries and worries about being laid off from our job and on and on and on. So there is no uh, paucity of things to worry about, however, constantly holding them in your mind, you know, not being able to quiet your mind causes stress, not only mentally, but physically. And then that stress is what lead, will lead you to your next binge. So how to quiet your mind? Well, practices such as prayer, meditation, uh, listening to music, or any activity that takes your mind off of what's going on, this eternal you know, mind chatter. So I've, I've put a link for a, a free meditation that can help you to quiet your mind in the show notes. So feel free to download that and use that meditation to try and practice quieting your mind and try other things that I've mentioned as well. Number two, question your old beliefs. I mean, some of the things that we've grown up believing just aren't true anymore or some of the things that you have developed as a belief over time just really no longer serve you. So I remember uh, my mom who had five kids, so I know that's stressful. I didn't have to have that experience, but uh, she used to tell us, you know, you have to clean your, your plate because uh, kids are dying in China. I, I think I'm not the only one who heard that statement. Maybe they weren't in China, but in Africa or wherever. But we all know that cleaning your plate, like eating everything on your plate is not necessary, right? Because that doesn't serve you. The, the point is, hopefully you've learned by now 
that you eat until you're slightly full, until you feel satisfied. And if there's something left on your plate, feel free to save that for the next meal if you don't want to throw it away. But overeating, eating more food than your body needs is a waste anyway, right? So think of other beliefs, uh, such as the belief that uh, no one will love me unless I lose weight, or I can never get my dream job because of my size, or you know, any of these beliefs were, that are negative and that keep you stuck in a certain place in your life. See if you can challenge this kind of thinking and, you know, really, um, instead of letting this, this old record keep playing over and over and over, because letting it play over and over and over is what keeps you from achieving your dreams and your goals. So. The third thing you can do to prioritize mental health is to stay conscious. As the kids say, stay woke. Okay, that's a lot harder than it sounds. I know Eckhart Tolle has been trying to teach us how to be in the now for, uh, it's been a long time now, more than a decade. But, you know, there's so many calls on our attention. There's social media, there's our phone, there's a computer, there's the news, there's, you know, relationship, it just on and on, taking us out of the present moment. But if you can stay conscious, you will have more power to interrupt your behaviors than you will if you allow yourself just to go unconscious. And then next time you look up, you have an empty box of donuts or you've eaten a whole chicken or you've done, done fill in the blank, whatever it is. Excuse me. So being immersed in a habitual negative frame of mind promotes your food obsessions, your binge eating, emotional and stress eating and obsessing about your body as well. So we wanna try to stay conscious and uh, acting consciously will help you to avoid the next binge. We know that uh, when you have a feeling such as frustration or confusion. You know, I have a favorite saying that people in the anchor program tease me about, that confusion is an ally of your eating disorder, an ally of your ego, because confusion allows you to go unconscious. Oh, I don't, I don't know what I feel. I, I mean, this, I have no idea what's going on with me at the same time that I am benching. So when you find yourself in frustration, in confusion, in fear, in anxiety, that should be like a flashing red light. Danger, wake up, wake up. So if you can heed that flashing red light, it will allow you to interrupt a binge or to even maybe prevent a binge. And then finally, just stop taking your thoughts so seriously, I know that many of you feel like your brain is telling you some important stuff that you really need to pay attention to. But let me tell you, it's really not. Um, you need to make a distinction between your automatic, um, just relentless and repetitive thoughts and your intuition. By all means, listen to your intuition, but please stop taking your brain's repetitive thoughts seriously. Think of them as junk mail and just delete and then move back into your active email box. It's particularly important during the current times because there's just so much going on that it can be overwhelming. And in order to stay out of overwhelm, sometimes you have to do some pretty, you know, you have to set some boundaries like I'm not going to listen to the news today or maybe I'm going to check in with a different news source, or um, maybe I'm gonna focus today on something that makes me feel good, whether it be um, you, you know, doing a bubble bath, if, you're, if your state is open and you can get a massage, if not, walking in a beautiful place um, can help ground you, being in nature, listening to music, anything that you know brings you a little bit of peace and joy. Seek that now more than ever because we need it 
to stay uh, sane, to stay, have our equilibrium, and to keep our mental health doing well. So recovery cannot be based on willpower. So if you're thinking, well, you know, I binge today, but tomorrow I'm going to force myself to, you know, just eat healthy. Uh, in the long run, that doesn't work. So it's important for you to recognize that basing your recovery on willpower gives you just a shaky foundation. And there's a stronger foundation by going deeper into yourself. And I talk about this in my free ebook, which, you, which is called The Five Levels of Recovery. And you can download that free ebook at yourfoodbattle.com. No charge to you. So nourishing your spirit during these difficult, overwhelming, and emotional times is really important. And not for some kind of woo-woo or abstract reason, but because nourishing your spirit actually helps your brain recover. So having connections, whether it be by Zoom or if you're able in person, um, can lower your risk for relapsing, um, staying conscious of what you're doing, even when you're alone, uh, grounding yourself by being in nature, distracting your busy mind when it gets lost in those repetitive thoughts. All of those things are ways to satisfy your soul's yearning for fulfillment, for a sense of meaning in life. So prioritize your mental health and well-being, and that will enable you to deal with the binging. I hope this has been helpful. In the show notes, I'll give you some links to things that we've talked about here. Please uh, sign up or subscribe to my YouTube channel, and that way you can be notified right away when the next video is posted. So this is part one of why am I binging more during the pandemic? And the next video obviously will be part two, and we'll be talking about prioritizing your physical well-being and what you can do to stay healthy during the pandemic. I hope this has been helpful. Dr. Carolyn, signing off. Bye-bye.